My name is Brooke Hewlett, and I invited you here um, thanks to HBB Leads. We're doing a free training call for you today, and we're going to keep doing these regularly. You might notice if you're on our newsletter list, we have a lot of new videos and trainings coming out. And the reason we're doing this, this stuff is totally free for you, and this is the content you can share with your team, share with your downline, get them all the information they need so they can be successful with leads, which in turn will make you successful in network marketing because you need to help other people be successful. And the reason we're doing this is that when you are successful with leads, we're successful. We genuinely want you to have great results with our leads. And to get great results with leads, you need great training. I was just talking about this. It is so important to get off on the right foot and get the right training. I've personally been in this industry full-time for about eight years now, and during my time in this industry, I've been able to be on calls with a lot of the top earners in many different companies. And what I do is I go on calls with them. I listen to live lead dials. A lot of leaders get leads from HVB Leads, and they dial them and let their team members listen to them dial so they can learn what to say on the phone. I've personally listened to thousands of lead calls by leaders. And what I've learned is a lot of the same techniques work with leads, and these same techniques are going to be shared with you on today's training with Monty Taylor. He is another person who's been extremely successful in this industry, and he's a veteran with about 25 years of experience now. He's been the CEO of two network marketing companies. He has a book on Amazon about handling objections when talking to prospects. And most importantly, he has that, he has that experience, that long-term experience, and his techniques, I can tell you, he didn't have to tell me his techniques work because his techniques are the same ones used by other top earners and other leaders. The people that are buying thousands of leads from HPB leads and are on the cover of, sometimes are on the cover of those home business magazines, those people are using these techniques. You're being handed right here, right, <laughs> handed right to you just for free, how to be successful like the other people that are successful with leads. So definitely take this training seriously. Take notes and try it for yourself because I can tell you, I know from a very long history of this that it definitely works. And I want to remind everyone again, this training is so important because if you take the time for this training, what you're doing, and I thank you for doing that, you dial leads, you're going to get better results. And that makes, you know, your lead buying will pay off for you, and you'll be able to keep building your business in that way. And also, we're having this training for you, not only for you, but so that when you start recruiting more people, you have a downline growing. They need to get this training as well. It's so important to your downline that they get an hour of training or more whether it's this training that HVB Leads provides for you with Monty Taylor, whether it's training with your team, you have people on your team that do live lead dialing, whether it's other books that you buy on scripts, just really take the time to study a little bit about dialing leads, get your scripts ready, be prepared, because when you bring in your downline, it's so important that they get results right away. If you bring in your downline and you have them get leads from HBB leads or somewhere else and they don't do well, it makes you look bad and they don't get good results, they're not going to keep dialing leads. Imagine the long-term effects on your business. Now imagine if you bring in your downline, these new recruits, and you get them on an hour or two of training with us. They know what to say on the phone. Their, their, their expectations have been managed. They know what's going to happen. They know what the prospects are going to say back. And they have some good results with dialing leads. And they keep dialing leads and, and talking to more prospects this month and every month thereafter. Imagine how much faster and how much bigger your business will grow. So again, always get this training in before you use leads. So without further ado, we're going to get this call started. I'm sure by now all of you have um, gotten the webinar software installed. My name again is Brooke Hewlett. I'm with HBBleads.com. Today we're bringing you Monty Taylor, who is an industry veteran, has a book on Amazon about handling objections, and has been the CEO of two network marketing companies. He has extremely solid advice. And without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Monty. So thank you for joining us, Monty, and go ahead and get started with your awesome <laughs> Thanks, training. Thanks, Brooke. Thanks so much. Great job. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the call at, in the afternoon, 2 p.m. at uh, Eastern Standard Time. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Brooke, thank you for inviting me. Um, 
Why we're here, I, I can tell you, Brooke does a great job with training, and I've, I've seen many of her trainings. We'll come back to uh, that uh, as we get towards the end. But uh, we both just love working with fellow entrepreneurs and working with people who want to do better and are you know, just trying to close the distance between where they are and where they want to be. So that's why we're here. We enjoy it. Congratulations to all of you for taking the time to improve your skills. That's a big part of Brooke's message. And just become more effective. And we, we want you to leave this being better at understanding what prospects need so they can move forward with you. And more important, share principles in, and techniques that work for the leaders that Brooke was talking about, work for people that are actually getting this to work extremely well. So here's what we're going to cover. Let me make sure that that's working. Here we go. Here's what we'll cover. Number one, the single most important thing you must do. We're going to talk about a mindset for prospecting with leads, very important, some basic objections managing principles, and some nuggets you can use right now. I don't know about you, when I finish a webinar or I invest the time that you're spending on a call like this, I want to leave with some actionable techniques that I can use right now. And we're going to give you some of those. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to share a little bit of the power prospecting formula with you, introduce that to you. I think you'll enjoy it. We're going to show you how to get these scripts and this presentation and some free videos, no strings attached whatsoever. And then at the end, Brooke has a really neat free leads coupon offer at the very end of the presentation. So stay tuned for that. You're going to want to get your hands on it. So that's what we'll, we'll cover. Very quickly, my goals for this presentation, I want you to, if you're brand new to leads, and maybe you're not, but if you're brand new to calling leads and following up, I want afterwards you to say, I can do this. I can do this. Uh, hopefully, lead buying will become part of your, your overall prospecting for no, new business plan, and you'll become more efficient more effective and comfortable in all your prospecting endeavors. And by the way, these techniques, these principles that we'll share with you, they work in the warm market as well. So they, they, they transfer over to that. You'll find them very valuable. They're all about communications. We want you to be able to, and, and this is what Brooke was saying, we want you to be able to grow your team and your organization more quickly. And uh, bottom line, so you're much better at helping people, helping your prospects, and I'll tell you, I don't know about you, but I want to know when I'm wasting my time. And I think there's so much time wasted in our industry because some folks just aren't given the skills they need. So here we go. What's the most single most important thing you must do? That is be prepared. Now, that might sound obvious, but number one, I'm going to suggest that you make sure you have a tracking follow-up calendar system. You can't manage what you can't track and measure. You have to be able to keep your time day appointments with prospects. Now, this may seem obvious. Oh, okay, I need a calendar. But I'll tell you what, most of the time when I'm talking to people that are doing leads, the ones that aren't pros at it are working from a yellow pad or something they've made up, and they're just not effective. Now, I use a planner pad executive because it works for me. Go to Amazon, look up. Look up. I, don't, uh, I don't have any stock in the company. But find a system that works for you that you can track and follow up and not get lost, and that is so important. Let me say, this is one of those things we call this big doors swing on small hinges. And this is a small hinge that swings a big door. This is a high leverage item. Get the little hinges right or you can forget opening the big door. Have your system. Number two, make sure that you're prepared with your master prospector's mindset. Now, most people are going, oh, you know, we're talking about mindset. Can we get to the how-to? Well, the how-to is really the mindset. It, it's setting that foundation. Let me go through it real quickly. This is really important. You can use this for leads. You can use it for warm market as well. Number one, clarity of intention. Uh, what I'm talking about there is you have to be aware that your intentions can be read by people. They can absolutely be read. And I coach people all of the time saying, if you're in a survival mode in terms of your intention, you're just all about what you're going to get from making that phone call, can I close, can I close, can I close, people are going to read that intention, your prospects are going to read that intention, and they're going to be resistant. You absolutely have to be clear with your intention, and your intention when you're calling leads 
is to help people. See if you can help them get clarity, support them, and guide them. So that's what we mean when we say clarity of intention. And if you're clear and you're in a contribution mode, then they're going to be much, much less resistant. It sounds odd, but this is a key point. Abraham, uh, J. Abraham hypothesis. I'm a big fan over 30 years of J. Abraham. He's a master teacher, trainer in, in marketing. And J. talks about this, and he has since the first day I ever heard him back in the 80s. He says, most people, and he means clients, prospects, most people are silently begging to be led. And you want to have that mindset that you're the leader, you're taking the lead. And you're saying, I'm a professional, I have a plan, and by lead I mean taking the conversational lead. Here's the key to all this. If you want a better business, you want to be better at prospecting, then learn to take the lead, learn to ask better questions. Key, key strategy. Next thing, change of focus strategy. This is very simple. I know you get this. You have to take your focus off of yourself, get your arrows pointed out to your prospect, focus on your prospect and kind of send the message in your languaging and in your questions and in your posture. Here's what you, the message you want to send. I'm interested in you and what you need. I'm not on the phone here trying to be interesting. Focus out. Get your arrows out. Sell what people are buying. It's a less trusting, less marketing-friendly world. Most people at this point, and I think you know it on this call, they feel like they're being taken for a ride. They don't know what they don't know when you call them. And when they feel that way, they end up saying, even though they may not say it directly to you, they just say to themselves, hmm, um, this is not for me. So your job as a master prospector following leads is to say to yourself, or, or is to say to your people with your messaging, that you understand them, you're not just paying them lip service. Look for ways to provide value. How do you do that? Give people your attention. Listen, sell empathy, attention, connectedness, leadership. Guide the conversation. Give them clarity. This is what people are buying. They're not buying you talking about yourself and all the incredible things you've done. Put your focus on them. And then finally, listen more, talk less, ask questions. This is one of the major messages of Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He said, people are hungry for this. Most people are not listening to hear, but they're listening to get prepared to say something. Make sure that with your prospects, you're listening more, talking less, and asking great questions. This is your master prospector's mindset. I know we spent some time on it, but boy, is it important. Consider this, and it'll make a big difference in your posture on the phone. All right. The third thing, this is the area, lots of preparation. I'm going to say right now that 80% of what you do calling leads is preparation. It's actually not the phoning of the leads and everything else. It's the preparation you do before you ever pick up that phone. So we're going to recommend to you that you have the following scripts, prepared, ready to go. We'll help you with those and walk you through so you can develop your own or copy these. That's a leave a message script, a connecting script, a qualifying script, an invitation presentation script, a closing script, and a next steps follow-up script. If you have all of these done in terms of scripts, you're going to have 80% of your preparation done. And boy, this is going to take away all that angst, and you can just rock through your leads. You want to be prepared. So let's start. Uh, first thing you want to put together is your leave a message script. I'm going to share mine. It's a little bit lengthy. There's reasons for it, and I'm going to do another slide in a moment that show you some key words in this that you might want to borrow and use and why I use them. So this would be my message if I'm calling a lead. I'm going to say, hi, Mary, and I have her name from my leads. And this is Monty Taylor from Orlando, Florida, and you and the reason this is in brackets, by the way, I'll only say this once, you may have to change what's in the bracket depending on the type of lead that you purchased. But um, you spoke with one of our agents saying that you had interest in learning more about our home-based income project. I wanted to follow up and get you all the information you need and answer any of your questions. So could you please return my call? I really think you'll like what you learn, and I'm looking forward to speaking with you. If I happen to be on another call, please leave your number and the best time to call you back. Once again, this is Monty Taylor at Have a Great Day, Mary. So a little lengthy, but I use it 
I've refined it over the years. It absolutely works, and it'll give you a great opportunity to have some people return your calls. Not everyone will. Now, let me say this before I go into some key words. The reason that you have a leave a message script may not be obvious. Let me share with you if you're new. If you're not new, you already know this. Brooke and I have talked about it. We've experienced it probably 50% or more of the people never that, that leads that you call, they don't pick up the phone. And you have to leave a message or not leave one at all. I leave a message. You're going to want to leave a message because more than half of the time, no one's going to pick up that phone. People are busy. So here's why we do this. Hi, Mary. This is your name. So I'm going to say this is Monty Taylor from Orlando, Florida. I'm sending the message that I know her name. I'm, I want to connect, possibly build some rapport through my message. I want to let her know that I'm a real person with a real name from a real city and state. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the real deal. And uh, you spoke with one of our agents saying that you had interest in learning more about our home-based income project. Now, this is what I say. Um, I coach people to try to work yourself away from some of the hackneyed phrases like opportunity and all those things that are said over and over and over. I'm right now tending to use home-based income projects. I like projects. So I wanted to follow up and get you all the information you need and answer any of your questions. What I'm saying with this phrase is I'm not calling you up to beat you up, sell you, trying to talk you into anything, sell you something that you neither need nor want. I'm just calling Mary to get you all the information you need because you requested information on a home-based income project. So these are key phrases. Feel free to borrow them. Could you please return my call? I really think you'll like what you learn. And I'm saying that to, to future and to build some rapport. I'm looking forward to speaking with you. If I happen to be on another call, please leave your phone number. Once again, Monty Taylor, have a great day, Mary. So there's reasons for all of that. Feel free to borrow. By the way, you invested in your lead, so you have to make a decision on this. I happen to leave two messages. This is my final message script. It's just a little bit different than the original message script, just a couple variations. But uh, I leave a second message, but it has a little different spin. And you can see these. I'm going to put them in red. Hi, Mary. This is Monty Taylor from Orlando, Florida, leaving a second and final message. Don't do it. Don't, uh, don't be cute with it, cutesy, flip, or anything like that. I'm just leaving a second and final message. That's my posture. And as a reminder, I walk her back through that, saying you had interest in learning more about our home-based income project. I wanted to try you one more time and get you all the information you need. This is the same. If you're, and this is key on your second and final message, if you're still interested in home-based income, because good heavens, uh, Mary likely filled out a form or she was interviewed by uh, an, a follow-up agent, depending on the kind of lead. That's what she said she was interested in. So if, if you're still interested, please return my call. Here's my contact number. I really think you'll like what you learn, and I'm looking forward to speaking with you. Once again, this is Monty Taylor, Orlando, Florida. So I just leave two messages. That's my posture. Uh, I'm... Uh, it's entirely up to you. I believe there's millions of people out there looking for what I have to offer. So just offer leadership, a plan, home-based message, home-based income message, two message, and that it. That's it. It's up to you. After that, I'm done. If I don't get the call back, no worries, no problem. So that's your final message script. Oh, by the way, let me say, in case you came on the call late, Brooke mentioned this. All of these scripts are, are available to you. We're going to show you at the end how to download them in a PDF. If you'll just hang tight with us uh, through this call, we're, we have a great offer at the end. We're going to give you all these scripts, everything, this presentation. It's all yours. It's free, no strings attached. So don't worry. If you're scribbling notes, you don't really need to. We'll give you these scripts. So we talked about the leave a message script, connecting script. This is really important. Some people think of connecting as, hey, I connected the call. I've got them on the phone. Well, it's much more than that. We've started connecting, hopefully, with our message. But this is that connecting where you're attempting through your message, and when you do finally get them on the phone, and we'll show you a script on that in a moment, where you're, you're trying to build a little bit of rapport. This is that being interested. Tell me about you. It's about you. It's not about me. And all of that, just be aware if you can learn to build rapport, 
and maybe it's because there's some commonality in your name or the city that you're from or something they say this is so key uh, rep- don't skip to skip the rapport part and jump right into introducing your I've seen this so many times uh, the pros don't do it the pros don't jump right into a presentation they want to build a little pr- rapport with that person rapport is like money the less you have the less rapport you have, the more its value increases. So seek first to understand. This is that connecting script. Uh, by the way, to remind you, that's part of the reason we said, hi, Mary, and this is my name, and this is where I'm from, and so forth. Now, at this point, Mary has picked up the phone. So I'm using basically the same script with a couple of keyword changes. And I'll say, hi, Mary. This is Monty Taylor. I understand you spoke with one of our agents and that you had interest in learning more about our home-based income project. I was hoping we could visit for a few minutes. That's what we do with friends is that we visit. We don't uh, hopefully spend hours beating them up or trying to sell them something. I just want to visit with Mary and see if I can help her with all the information she needs and answer her questions. Now, this, we're actually going to go a little bit into qualifying here. This is that This phrase that's just come up is, absolutely key and that is is this a good time to speak after you've introduced yourself and saying that you hope that that, uh, you could visit for a few minutes this is the next thing you want to hear coming out of your mouth is this a good time to speak now maybe as often as half the time when you say this people are going to say no I'm just and they'll tell you no no I'm real busy right now I'm going to work I'm sitting down to dinner whatever just remember uh, 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 have some empathy about that. I know that every time my friends or people call me, I'm not ready to sit and talk on the phone. And, and neither are you. So have some empathy about that. People will say that. And here's what you do. You come right back with, oh, I'm sorry, this is an inconvenient time. Just a real quick question before you go. Are you still interested in learning more about home-based income? That's a big question. This is an important question. So that's the second thing in terms of connecting and qualifying you want to come out of your mouth. Are you still interested in learning more about home-based income or whatever you like to say, a home-based opportunity, whatever works for you. This is what I use. Now, they'll probably come back and say, yeah, but it's not a good time for me. They may say, no, not interested at this point, whatever. We'll talk about that in a moment. You want to say, I understand, Mary. So we do, if they say, yes, I'm interested in home-based income, but I don't have time at this moment. I'm running, rushing off to teach a class. You say, I understand, Mary. So we don't ch- have to chase each other. What would be a day and a time we could both put down in our calendars real quickly, and I'll phone you back then? So you can see what we're doing here. We just want to set a time to get back with Mary when it's a good time, because you called it an inconvenient time. So set a time with Mary and then just say, great, reconfirm this, and I'll give you a couple of things. This is so important. This is just foundational work, but this works uh, beautifully if you catch a prospect at the right time. Set that time. Okay, I have us down for Thursday at 1 1 p.m. Is this still the best phone number to reach you? I've had people, when I ask that question, say, you know, not really. Let me give you my mobile number. (laughs) That's, That's beautiful. You know that they're interested. They may say just, yes, it is. Then you say, okay, Mary, I promise I'll phone you then. And then this is a great question. I love to ask it. This is your next qualifying question. Before you go, Mary, I know you're in a hurry. If you were going to estimate the weekly income you'd like to make, what would you say? Boy, that's a key qualifying question. And Mary may say, "Ah, gee, I don't have time. Or she may say, I don't know. That's okay. Don't press her. Or she may give you a number. Oh, about four to 500 a week. And you say, great, thanks, and then reconfirm the day and the time and the the appointment. So a couple of notes on this. This is all key. I won't go back through it. These scripts are available for you, but I think you can start to see that there's a plan here, and these are the kind of things, plus or minus a few word variations, that the pros are using. A couple additional notes. If you set a time with Mary or your prospect, keep your promises. That's what you have the planner for. Keep your appointments. You have a big opportunity in keeping your appointment to begin revealing your character. You know, character is about people that do what they say they're going to do. Say They say please and thank you. and <laughs> They do what they say they're going to do. Those are some attributes of character. So keep your appointment. Uh, if for some reason you can't, something comes up, uh, then let them know whatever way you can you need to reschedule. But keep your appointment. 
Sometimes I'll do this. This uh, You may want to use this, depending if the person isn't really rushed. I'll say, Mary, would you like my phone number just in case something comes up for you? I'll email it or text it to you. And sometimes the right prospect, they'll give you, uh, they'll say, great, yeah, give me your phone number, and just in case something comes up, I'll call you. Another thing you can do is say, would you like me to send you a reminder confirmation note? I love to do that. It starts to tell me about the prospect and I'm also revealing my character. Hey, Mary, I'll send you a little note and remind you that we have 1 p.m. on Thursday. So look for opportunities to build rapport. Whatever you call your, uh, your business, if it's network marketing, if it's relationship marketing, if it is direct sales, if that's what you like to call it, referral marketing, party plan, whatever it is, they all rely on relationship building and connecting and creating rapport is where it should start. It's absolutely essential from the moment that you encounter a prospect, begin by first seeking to build rapport. Brooke and I have had some neat conversations about this and, and uh, how she's learned that and what she does and just how key that is. When you have rapport with a prospect, it changes everything. So the message you want to send is, you seem like an interesting person. I'd like to get to know you better. It's not, I'm a really interesting person, and I can't wait to tell you all about me. That's not the message. Okay. Qualifying script, we've talked about those. I just want to remind you that first qualification is, is this a good time to speak? All right? Now, second qualification is, great, could you tell me how much money you want to make on a weekly basis? This is important. And I put an arrow there because it's such a key area. Could you tell me how much money you'd want to make on a weekly basis? This is going to open up a, a great a conversation with some people, and it sets up everything else you're about to do. It kind of tees you up. If you're a golfer, it's going to put it right there. Forget the sport, uh, forgive the sports metaphor. But that's what that's for, and I'll show you why. If they give you a number. This sets you up for your invitation presentation script. Let me show you what I mean. So you've said to Mary, great, to begin, Mary, could you tell me how much money you'd want to make on a weekly basis? And she said, oh, about $350 a week would be perfect. You come back with this. It could be great, perfect. I believe our business could help you earn that level of income. Or if it's the truth, you can say this and add this. We have many people in our business earning that income and more. Don't say that if that's not the truth. If it's the truth, you can certainly add it. We have many people in our business earning that income and more. And here's your invitation script right here. This is the next thing that you want to hear coming out of your own mouth. Mary, would it be worth 10 minutes of your time to find out how? Now, the reason 10 minutes is in brackets is because if, it, if your presentation is shorter or longer, takes more time, it's going to be live, whatever you decide, and we're going to go to the next slide to talk about that, just tell the truth on that. Don't say 10 minutes if it's really going to be 30 minutes. People notice those kind of things. So you say, would it be worth 10 minutes of your time to find out how? And if Mary says, yes, wow, you are on your way, you'll come back and say, Mary, we have an outstanding introductory fill in the blank, webinar, audio, streaming, video presentation. I really think you'll enjoy it, and it will help answer many of your questions. Uh, can we watch or listen or review it now? Now, you have to decide what you're going to use. Do that in advance. I like to use streaming video. Take them right to a streaming video. Get them to open it up. Email it to them. Open it up. Take them to the link. Sometimes, depending on where I'm at, I like to use an audio uh, overview so I can two-way, or excuse me, three-way call them into it. So you use what works for you, and if you can, say, can we watch, listen, review it now? My recommendation is that you take them right there with you rather than send them to it. Now, some folks don't do that. If I've got a prospect that's gone this far, whenever possible, I'm going to take them there and hold their hand because I'm there. I'm sending a message. I'm, the, I'm here to help. I'm going to go watch this presentation or listen to this presentation for the 575th time. I'm kidding. I'm going to do it with them because I'm sending a message if I can. Sometimes this doesn't work out. Now, a couple of notes. Sometimes right here your prospect has gotten this far, and they may have what's called an unexpressed objection or fear. And I've, had, I've, I've tried to close on the invitation uh, script at this point, 
and what I call the invitation presentation script, and they'll block. So be aware that sometimes they're going to block right here because they're worrying about something. And it may be something like this, just to give you an idea. They may say, um, before we do that, uh, how much is this thing going to cost? Or how much does it cost before we do that? And they haven't seen a thing. They have no idea the value. So just be aware if they do say something like that, feed it right back to them. I'll say, Mary, that's a great question or that's an important question. Do you have concerns about cost? Don't avoid it. Mary, that's a great question. Do you have concerns about cost? Let Mary express if she blocks at that point. And then I'll come back with something like this. I'll say, Mary, after she expressed her cost concerns, uh, I have good news. There's always a little cost to start a business, but with our program, we have ways to get you started that almost anyone can afford. I have good news. There's always a cost to start a business, but with our program, we, we have ways to get you started that almost anyone can afford. And I'll say, here's my suggestion. Take a look at the presentation. Then we'll go over the small startup costs. You decide. You deserve to see what this is all about and decide. Does that sound fair? So this is not salesy. It's authentic. Someone tries to block you. Thank them for the question at this point. Answer their concern or objection. We're going to give you some more uh, techniques on that that are authentic and they work. They're respectful. And now uh, you can schedule and confirm your introductory presentation. And as I said, stay with them. Lead them by the hand. Let them know you'll answer all their questions after. If they start asking you questions, by the way, at this point before the presentation, just say, hey, you know, that's a great question. Why don't we watch the presentation or listen to the presentation? Then afterwards, I think you're going to have even more questions, and I'll answer them all then. Don't get into a Q&A before your presentation. Thank them for it. That's a key. Let's watch the presentation. You deserve, Mary, to see the presentation so you can decide for yourself, don't you? And then always confirm your next steps conversation. By the way, really important, avoid oral presentations. They're not duplicable. They send the wrong message. I don't do them. You're sending the message. If you, if you uh, give somebody a 15- or 20-minute oral presentation, uh, they, they don't work, and you're sending a message. That's what they have to do. Use a tool. Use uh, one of your company's great tools, whatever it is, and use those whenever possible. Okay, so we've done all of this thus far, right up to the invitation presentation script. We're at the closing script, okay? So this is a key area. I find uh, most networkers, we'll use that term, most network marketers can do everything that we talked about to some degree with skill, but boy, do a lot of them fall down on the closing. So let's talk about closing for a moment. Why do we close? Some people come back, well, it's you know, to get the money, to get them in our deal or whatever it is. That's not why we close. Consider a paradigm shift on this. The reason that we close is this. Let's get real clear. To help people, to provide clarity, direction, next steps, a plan. Remember, your intention is to help people. We close to get all their questions, concerns, objections out in the open. If you don't Take the time to learn good closing questions. That's kind of wrap it up questions. I promise you it will come back to bite you. Even with people that said, yep, let's go, let's get started. If you didn't ask the kind of closing questions, I'm going to show you one or two here, there's still going to be things many times in the back of your prospect's mind that, they, that, that you haven't dealt with yet, and it will come back to bite you. So we close to get everything out in the open. I don't know about you. I want to get everything out in the open so we can move forward. We want to address anything that's, that's going to keep them uh, from getting what it is they say they want or need. And we want to determine, this is another reason for closing, if they or we are wasting our time and energy. And this is what professional networkers do. They close. Okay? So this is a soft closing question. After someone's looked at your presentation, you can say, what did you like best? Don't ask them what they thought. Ask them what they liked best about the uh, presentation or best about what you saw, what you heard or experienced. That's a soft closing question, and it opens them up to talk about it. What did you like best? Tell me more. This is one of my favorites. I put question marks because I don't know what they're going to say at this point. I use this all the time. I want to share it with you. This is one of those nuggets. 
love to use it. I, I have many more of these in, in my book, Objections Handled, if, if you'd like some more. But this is a fun one. You can say, on a scale of 1 to 10, Mary, with 1 being low and 10 being high, how would you rate your interest in moving forward with us and creating that weekly income we spoke about? This is a great question. I don't know what Mary's going to say, but this is a key closing question that gets people talking. So just a couple of things more on that. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a quick story. I, I don't usually do this, but uh, I was a couple of months ago, um, I, have a, I actually have six children, and one of my children who's a great uh, professional recruiter uh, by trade um, and also is a very, very talented uh, uh, network marketer called me and said, you know, Dad, I'm, I feel like I do the presentation and everything so well, what, but I'm missing on the closing part. And I said, Eric, just try this next time you do a presentation, whether it's in person or on the phone with a lead, just or any time you do a presentation, just, just take, a, take a little uh, 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 acid test here. It's called closing and use the 1 to 10 question. And uh, you, you, you do it this way. You say, you, you sum up first. You say, Mary, you're looking to make extra income from home, and you reviewed this presentation, and you asked some great questions. Mary, I have an important question. On a scale of 1 to 10, if 1 is low and 10 is high, how would you rate your interest in moving forward together and getting started? This is a great question. And I'll tell you, if you get a 5 or less, you're probably wasting your time. You can certainly, if you want, say, Mary, what's missing for you or holding you back? If you get a six to seven, don't just say great. Ask the question, what else would you need to move you to a nine or ten? And if you get an eight to ten, just say perfect. Let's get started. I'm excited about working with you. And if you're like me, you'll move to 11 once you see what a great decision you made. Now, finishing that story with my son, 27 years old, I saw him a few weeks later in a presentation. And afterwards, he turned to a couple of two or three prospects in the room and said, can I ask you a question? Looked right at both of them. Tell me, one being low, ten being high, um, where are you on a scale of one to ten? And it just worked beautifully. They were both uh, uh, sevens or eights, and he said, great, let's get started, and gave them a getting started plan. So here we are. We're more than, we're more than halfway through this presentation. We're moving quickly, but here's where we are right now. You're prepared now because of all of these scripts. This is the hard work, getting these pre uh, scripts prepared, and you have a playbook. And I'm going to put it right here in a 5,000-foot view for you so you can see it and you can download these later. You've got your tracking follow-up calendar system. You've got your master prospector's mindset, and I recommend you read through these again because they're so important. And you have your scripts and communication plan. You may have 90% of what you need to do if you've done all of this. This is your leads playbook. If you have all this done, wow, you are on your way. So now let's, uh, let's keep moving quickly. Uh, I want to teach you a little bit about Avis, how to easily and effectively manage almost any objection, question, or concern. Quick story. One of the reasons I wrote the book and, and published it this uh, spring called Objections Handled, 101 scripts for, uh, Sample Scripts for Network Marketers, is I, I began to realize when I was drilling down that so many networkers or wannabe networkers, people that uh, aren't going out there and making the presentations and talking to people, when you drill down on it, they're just totally afraid of rejection. And that rejection that they're afraid of is they're afraid someone's going to say something to them. And that was the reason I wrote the book, not just to give people scripts, but to teach them how to respond to almost any objection, question, or concern. And if you can learn this, I promise you this will pay off big time in all of your prospecting. And it's a system you can use over and over. It's, it helps you clarify issue, the issues and uh, next steps by asking quality questions and helps you understand the importance of listening carefully. So let's go through it real quickly. I talked about that fear already. Uh, I think this is what holds people back a lot of times in prospecting. They don't call leads. They don't talk to people because they think there's going to be some future pain. Oh, my gosh, someone's going to say something to me like, oh, I don't, uh, I don't like to sell, or I don't want to have to talk people into buying anything. And Is this one of those pyramids? Is this a network marketing scheme? I'm not interested. 
oh, I tried that once. Those things never work. These products cost too much, or those products always cost too much. I'm way too busy. I don't have any time. Only a few people ever make money, and I don't have any money right now. I'll tell you what, this is probably 80% of what you'll hear. So if you can learn to handle these in a respectful, authentic way and find out what people are really saying, it's going to help you a lot because there's a lot of BS out there. And by that I mean belief systems. By the way, the only belief system you can control or change is your own belief system. Be aware of that. That's not what about handling objections is. It's not about trying to control somebody's belief system. But what it can do is help you learn and uncover whether they're resistant or totally against, or are they taking a position? Are they just tossing out an automatic script? Some people, no matter what you say, they'll toss something out. Nah, I don't want to do that. Or, nah, I'm, I'm too busy. And they didn't even hear what you said. So you do want to be aware, and Avis will help you learn that they just want to be heard, or what do they want to express, or are they open to learning more or next steps. This will help you so much. Uh, let me teach you Avis real quickly. We're going to go through it. Uh, uh, we're about three-quarters of the way through, just so you know. But this is so valuable, I'd recommend it to you highly. Now, the A in Avis is for acknowledge. The two Vs are for validate and verify. I'll show you what I mean by that. The I in Avis is for isolate. The S in Avis is for solve. Now, you can learn this, by the way. This is easy. Don't overthink it. It just becomes a little automatic transmission running underneath everything you do when people start questioning you. Avis, acknowledge, validate, verify, isolate, and solve. Uh, Avis has nothing to do with the rental car company. Years ago, some of you may have been taught, or I know I was taught feel, felt, found. I know how you feel. I felt that way once, but what I found was, well, that works a little bit. This is much more sophisticated, and I think if you can learn it, boy, is it going to help you. Before we do some specific examples, remember, listening is as important to managing objections as oxygen is to breathing. It's respectful. It's supportive. Uh, focused attention is what people crave. Why don't you give people what they crave? That's what they want. They want focused attention. And don't commit the sin of being distracted. You, we, we're all more and more and more. I, I can barely barely talk to my teenagers because they're so distracted sitting there keying things into their mobile phones. Don't commit that sin even if you're on the phone. Listen carefully, okay? So let me give you a couple of examples. I'll give you some solutions, too. We're on slide 37. We're getting there. We're getting close. Prospect says something like, I just don't like to sell. You want to come right back every single time, almost no matter what the objection is, and acknowledge the objection by saying something like this, thanks so much for bringing this up, and mean it. Thank you so much for bringing this up. Then ask a question. Tell me about something about your experiences with with selling, or can you tell me more about your experiences with selling? So your prospect will respond. Just listen carefully. Uh, might might be a few minutes. It might be a long time. And allow them to say their piece. And this is the isolate in Avis. After you've listened to the whole thing, thank them for that. Say, no, thank you for sharing. By the way, Mary, other than your concerns about selling, do you have any other concerns? This is the isolate you want to isolate it. You don't want to be out there way fuzzy, not really knowing where they're at. Keep narrowing in so you understand. You'll see in a minute. And Mary comes back and says, well, maybe about how much time I'd have to spend. Now, she hasn't not really clear on that yet, so you say, wow, I'm glad you mentioned that your time concern. Tell me about how much time you'd have each week if this was a worthy project. You're isolating. You've acknowledged, validate, verify. And the prospect says this, wouldn't this be wonderful? Oh, I have 10 to 12 hours, about all I have a week. Keep isolating. Okay, thanks. Other than the time issue that you brought up, is there anything else that worries you, Mary? No, that's it. So you've isolated for time. You've isolated for selling. Those are her two big issues. This is easy stuff, folks. You can do this, and it's not salesy. It's authentic. Bingo, you're right there. Now you solve, okay? I'm going to teach you a little bit about solving. One of the things that I say at this point when you solve, you want to solve then question and do this. I'll say something like this. Great. Thanks for bringing all that up. Mary, if I could show you a way 
or another example, if I could show you how, then you fill in the solution. Now, in the interest of time, we can't go through every one of the solutions because I don't know all of the, the, the challenges that your prospects are going to bring up, although I'll tell you I think I've heard all of them, and there's probably only 8 to 10, maybe 12 at max. All you need to do is repeat as needed, but let me give you a couple of examples. And, and again, uh, uh, let me say these scripts are detailed and objections handled. Um, let, me, let me back up. I did that yesterday too, Brooke. Um, let me give you a couple of sample solutions, just, uh, and we'll put it in the presentations going forward. Someone says, let me find it. Someone says, for example, Okay, I don't have any money here. I'm just, I'm just, I have no money. So you might come back and say, I hear what you're saying, but if I could show you a way to get started with just a small investment, one that you could get back in a few weeks, what would you say? Someone says, I have very little time. You can come, you can come back and say, if I hear what you're saying about your time, but if I could show you a way to use the few hours that you do have in your limited time to build a real business with that income that you said you wanted, what would you say? So all you're doing is feeding back, acknowledging what they said, and saying, if I could show you how we could use your little bit of time to build a business, what would you say? Someone says, I, I can't sell. You come back and say, if I could show you how you could turn the fact that you have no selling experience into a real plus with our training and my help, to build that real business and that income you said you wanted over the next 12 to 18 months, what would you say? Or if they say something like, this one of those MLM or pyramids, you might say, Mary, let me say this. If I could show you how this model is not a pyramid, but a real ethical, solid business that's helping thousands of people make real incomes, that income that you said you wanted, and that you can be successful with this, what would you say? So. There's certainly different ways to do that, lots of scripts in my book, but that's a way uh, all of the time I'm looking to give them a solution for that thing that they objected to. So quick, important takeaways. Master prospectors, don't wing it. Be authentic. Don't try to be clever. Immediately acknowledge prospects' concerns. I've had so much feedback over the, since the book came out from people coming back and sending me notes and, 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 and writing in uh, comments on Amazon that just learning how to use Avis took away all their fears because they feel like they can talk to anybody. Validate people's right to a point of view. They have a right to their point of view whether you like it or not, and they have it whether you like it or not or I like it or not. So go ahead and validate it. Use expanding questions to gain clarity. Here's one of those uh, nuggets. Uh, I use these all the time. Feel free to use them. Learn these. They're fun. Your prospects will open up to you. They're talking. They say a point say something like, please say more about that, or that's interesting, tell me more about that. I don't like to sell, that's interesting, tell me more about that. I'm curious about something you said. Earlier you said you just don't have any money. Tell me more about that. What's your experience with selling, network marketing? What's your experience with calling leads? Ask them what their objection is and tell you more about their experience. Fill in the blank. I'm wondering what you meant by that. You, what, what you're doing there with all of this is helping be their thinking partner. You're lining up on their side. Get on their side. Don't be the adversary. Be their thinking partner, their clarity partner, their great friend sitting down at the, ki the, the kitchen table, helping them think through what it is they're saying to you. That's a completely different mindset, a different paradigm, a different posture. You're not in a war of words. You're not trying to win a battle of minds. Don't pounce. Don't try to overwhelm your prospect with snappy comebacks or one-liners. There's some stuff. There's some books out there that have nothing but snappy uh, comebacks and one-liners for what people say, and, and a lot of them are very, very, at least in my humble opinion, no, no disrespect to the people that are putting that out, but what they're saying is, is too cutesy and it's disrespectful. Uh, and I'd just hang up if somebody said some of that stuff to me. So take your time. Listen. Be thoughtful. And uh, we're, we're just a few more minutes here. Uh, invest the time to learn the power of prospecting formula. I just want to share with you that I created a formula that, that uh, really I've introduced you to a lot of this already. This formula 
will run through your prospecting and it, it teaches you how to go through the steps of connecting, qualifying, invite, turning your qualification you're, you're qualifying whatever that need is into an invitation and then using the invitation to introduce your product or your opportunity or your income project, then managing objections. Then after that, isolating everything, closing to action and following up. And if you can learn this prospecting formula, you say, well, how do I learn this? I'll show you in a moment how you can learn it. It's completely free. I've got videos on all of this. Boy, it'll make a big difference for you. This will run underneath everything you do, and it's easy to learn. Uh, nuggets you can use. Uh, we already talked about 1 to 10 question. We talked about expanding question. I want to tell you real uh, quickly that I have one. I think we have time, Brooke. I'm going to share it real quickly. I, loved, I promised you a couple nuggets. Here's one more I use. It's called What's Your Number? This is something I'll use in small presentations, one-on-one, -on -one, over the phone, one-on-two. I've used it in large group presentations. It's a lot of fun. Keep it light. I'll just set it up. And what I really mean is what's your financial freedom number? And I'll say to people something like this. I'll say, uh, excuse me, I'll say, uh, let me ask you a question. Mary, how much money would you need coming in every month to cover all your bills, your payments, your living expenses, vacations, everything, and maybe some more left over for savings for a rainy day? What would that be? Let's cover every expense and leave some left over. What's your number? Most people will tell you. Uh, I very rarely haven't have found a person that won't tell you what the number is. They just let them think about it for a minute, and they'll come back with whatever the number is, maybe 5000 a month, it may be 10000 it may be more. I've heard some interesting numbers. This is what I say. Mary, imagine if in the next 24 to 36 months, with effort and work together, you could achieve your number and join the thousands of network marketers who have achieved their financial freedom number. And if you do your part, I'll do my part and work shoulder to shoulder with you to help you. So all I've done is come back and say, imagine if we could hit that number, Mary. Now, by the way, keep it light and fun, but never, ever promise you can hit the number. You can't. Never do financial projections. They're inappropriate. Uh, uh, just don't do them. If your company has income uh, disclosure statements published, uh, uh, then you can use those. But you can certainly say to people, imagine if we could hit that number together in the, num in the next 24 to 36 months. Maybe it would take longer. But part-time, we can get there together. And if you do your part, I'll do my part, and I'll work shoulder to shoulder with you, Mary, to get you to that number. I have to tell you, I've closed more people with that dreaming exercise and got them to get into that right brain a little bit and think about it a little bit. We didn't promise anything. The only thing I promise is I'll work shoulder to shoulder with them. If they do their part, I'll do my part, and we can get started. So finally, I just want to share with you uh, how to get the free Power Prospecting training videos. They're at montytaylor.com, HBB slides. All of these slides, you can download them. There's uh, no strings attached. Uh, if you subscribe while you're there, you'll see an opt-in box. Uh, there's a free report, How to Do Super Successful Three-Way Calls. Uh, I send out a free weekly prospecting tips via audio blog every week, uh, usually on Tuesday morning, 8.30 Eastern. I think you'll love it. There's a copy of this presentation via PDF. And by the way, we never, ever uh, sell your name or share your name with anybody. Use your name for anything. Uh, I've had people ask, you know, wh wh why, are you why are you having people opt in? And I'll say very simply, I have more books coming, and I'm building a huge list so I can send out to that list uh, 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 an offer on the new book, the new books that are coming in. And also, uh, my personal mission is to empower network marketing professionals. So I just would love to help you with whatever company you're in. It's so much fun to help and empower people. So um, finally... Uh, objections handled. I talked about the book. It has over 180 sample scripts, responses to all the common objections. It has the power prospecting formula, the Avis method in detail, more techniques that I really think you'll love in covering what people need and want. It's got some great non-sales closing scripts, and, and it's, it's got a real neat exercise you can use uh, 
uh, in one chapter to learn to respond to no matter – someone says, what do you do? It will teach you how to give one or two or three different responses that starts a great conver- prosper- uh, prospecting conversation. So it will teach you how to make your communication sizzle. And uh, just in the, in the uh, interest of time, I want to tell you that I've had some wonderful feedback on the book got to get it. Some people have said, uh, Monty hits a home run on this one. Uh, This book is an easy five star. Someone was kind enough to write in and say this is the most concise and easy to actually use in the everyday building of your business. By the way, when you go to Amazon, you see how inexpensive it is. I think you're going to love it. I'm proud of it, and I I hope you would uh, enjoy it. So, Brooke, I just want to say thank you so much, everybody. And, Brooke, thanks to you for inviting me and really turn it back to you at this point to go over some of this. And then if we have a few minutes, if you still feel we have time, let's do uh, a couple of uh, Q&A questions. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Thank you so much for this training. I want to emphasize something you talked about that is so important. You repeated it a lot, but I really want to emphasize it because it's so important to get good success with leads or your warm market, anyone really you're prospecting on the phone. This is probably the most important factor. Remember that when you, when you get leads or you have new people referred to you, uh, it's, it's just like imagine if you have a best friend. Let's say you have a best friend and you've started your home business and you're excited and you want to recruit your best friend. And I always ask people this on my own training calls. When you first introduced this product to your best friends or even your family, how many of them bought in five minutes, the first five minutes you showed it to them? Most people raise their hands. Nobody does. There, none. How many of them bought from you or joined your business um, after five days or a week? you probably had three or four or more of your family and friends join you. The point being that it takes time for people to get to know you. You have to build this relationship. And the second part of that 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 is a factor in this that Monty shared a lot is he was talking about listen, really listen to people. When you listen, that's going to build that relationship. And I want to ask you something, everyone out there. What do you, when people listen to you, when someone shows an interest in you personally and I, I listen to you and I take time to get to know you and I ask you about your business, and I, when I take time to listen to you and help you and your friends that you can call and listen to you, wh- how do you feel about those people in your life? I bet you like them a lot and you like talking to them a lot. Well, that, the same for your leads. So really take the time to listen to them and get to know them. Remember that your leads are just like your friends and family. It just takes time, it takes listening, it takes getting to know them. And no matter what objection you might get, whether it's money or time or whatever it is on the phone that seems challenging, that doesn't mean it's a deal breaker. You can simply ask them, well, can you tell me more about that? I want to understand you. I want to be able to help you. Can you explain more about that? And you'll find that that will really take your lead dialing and any other prospecting to the next level. When you make it about them, They're going to want to help you. You always make it, you know, what's in it for me? That's all anybody cares about, what's in it for me. So make it about them. Make it about helping them. And when you approach your lead dialing from that way, it's going to to go really well. So, again, Monty covered scripts on that. Yeah, Monty covered a lot of scripts covering that. And that just about wraps up any any comments I wanted to have on the training. Um, Again, so HBB Leads brought this training to you. We really like this training from Monty. If you like it, you can say when we we open up the line, say goodbye and let us know, uh, you know, that you like the call. And we have some special offers at HBB Leads I'll share right now. Uh, For new customers only, if you've already ordered from us, this won't apply. But if you've never ordered from us, we do have a sample of 20 free leads. And we give away these leads because a lot of people, once you try them, will come back and continue to order. So if you go to HBB Leads, it's hbbleads.com forward slash free. hbbleads.com, put a forward slash and the word free, all lowercase, and that will show you 20 free leads. If you have new recruits that you're bringing in over the next weeks and months, what you can do is bring them to HBB Leads. We're going to have more trainings just like this. And when you have those 20 free leads, you can bring in your new recruits, get them a basic training, get them a free sample of leads. It's all totally free. And that way they can kind of get their feet wet and, and start to learn how to do this method of marketing. Also right now at HBB Leads, our current weekly sale is we have 
are high quality value prospects or double your order free. So let's say you order 50 leads, we're going to give you 50 leads free. No coupon code, just go to website. On the website you can go to special offers. On the site, um, if you go to uh, short form leads, you're going to find them there, but you can just go to special offers on the top of the page. It's probably the easiest way. Again, no coupon code. This sale ends Saturday, so take advantage of it. And I'll tell you really quickly, with high quality value prospects, how to get the best results. These are meant for high volume leads. If you have an auto dialer, you're using a phone room, you have a marketing system, your own software, these are the leads you want to use. These leads are a couple weeks old. I mean, they're, not, they're not the highest quality leads, but they're still good quality leads, and they're really affordable. They're less than 50 cents each. So if you, these are the leads you want to use if you want to call 1,000 people this month. The high quality value prospects are the leads to use. So right now you can double that order free. So go to HPB Leads to get that special. And you can see our contact information on the webinar. My name is Brooke Hewlett. And you can write to customer service, call customer service. If you have any questions, we're here to help you. Uh, stay tuned to our newsletter and our, um, our website to have future trainings. And that about wraps it up. I think uh, myself and Monty will open the line if anybody has a comment or question. And Monty might be taking some questions one at a time. We might take one at a time. Uh, so thank you, everyone. And if, if you have questions or want to listen to Q&A, stick around. All right, Monty. Uh, let's, yeah, let's do it, Brooke. Uh, folks, we, we uh, have not used this, this part successfully yet, so you get to be uh, our uh, guinea pigs a little bit. But, uh, so it's all set up. If you have a question, press star six, and uh, it'll confirm that you want to ask a question. So uh, then just press one to add yourself to the queue. So what I'm going to do is move to the next questioner and see if we have any. If we don't, we'll, we'll wrap up. Do we have a question? Sounds like we don't, Brooke. Let me try again. Okay. If you have a question, star six, request to ask a question. It will confirm, and uh, we'll put you in the queue real quick, and, and it will open up your line. Sounds like we don't have questions. Brooke, we must have done such a great job. There's no questions. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. Can we open up the line and, and just see who's out there? Anybody wants to say hi or, sure. or a comment? Okay, great. Yep. Here we go. It's open. Boy, that's a quiet group, Brooke. <laughs> wow. Uh, the line is open if anybody, or if you just want to sign off and say goodbye, uh, say a comment about this training. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. And I'm going to stick around. Monty will stick around in case anyone else has a question for us. And hey, Monty, I can see your slides right now, your uh, PowerPoint. Good, great. I'm going to go in and view the wall here. Looks like we don't have questions, Brooke. Uh, once again, thank you, everybody. Brooke, you did a great job. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Appreciate it. And uh, um, we'll look forward to doing this again for you in the future. Wonderful. Thanks, Monty. You bet. I'll close out the bridge. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.